One of the advantages to being here at the NASDAQ, the company just reported fourth quarter earnings, and at, according to this, missing estimates on both the top and bottom lines, we need to talk about this immediately. And here you are, Dina Frieda Friedman uh, joins us now uh, with the results, chairman, chairwoman, and CEO uh, of the NASDAQ, and our, what are you? You're not really one of our parents, but you do, uh, over, we, We're we are friends. here. We are good yes, friends, and we, we are we here like at the NASDAQ. You, in the home. you host us, and we like being here. Um, Let's go over quickly. What, uh, what, what kind of quarter? How would you characterize a quarter yeah. overall? Well, actually, I, we feel very good about the, the growth that we were able to generate for our shareholders in the quarter. We had 5% overall um, organic growth across the business, but we did have one business, um, our index business, that had a tough quarter. So um, index was up 6% for the year, but in the quarter, the revenues declined 11% because of a really challenging market backdrop that everyone experienced. We had a 19% decline in our AUM in that business. But even with that, that, um, that one part of the business having more of a challenge, the overall business did quite well. We had, um, if we look at like the solutions we talk about, our anti-financial crime solutions, our corporate solutions, and those, those solutions that we serve our investors with, you know, that really generates our annualized recurring revenues, and that was up 8%. Um, and SaaS as a part of that was up 13%. So generally speaking, we feel very good about continued growth across the franchise, but, but Index did have a challenging quarter. The the businesses that you're in, some it seems like you can control and some I just don't, you really can't control. You can't really control um, the listing business or the There's another uh, front page of the journal today. The, you're not even, it's almost impossible to list if you're a crypto uh, concern at this point. So we, it's almost trickled to zero in, in the last quarter, didn't it, in a tough year. Yeah, so we definitely saw a, a sharp decline in the number of listings um, across, you know, in the United States and frankly around the world last year. And I, I think we're continuing to see that as we get into 2023. So, you know, that's a, a part of the beta that that we have to that we have to manage through. Right. I think that if we think about what is going to bring listings back into the, into the fray, I think there are two things. It's a supply and demand issue. Supply, we have about 200 companies on file to go public on NASDAQ. So we have supply, and they're really, they're really interesting companies that are looking to get out. But then it's a demand issue. And the investors continue to struggle to try to figure out how to predict the future. And their job is really to predict the future earnings potential of companies when they underwrite them. The interest rate environment continues to be in flux, and if we could see where that lands, I think that'll be helpful. The inflationary environment continues to be in flux, although I think we're starting to see steady declines there. And if those two things start to become more known, I think investors will have a better, a better ability to underwrite deals, and then it's just a matter of market performance. You know, is the economic backdrop going to be inviting to companies coming out? All right, so the number of listings down sharply, but am I reading this right? The NASDAQ stock market led U.S. exchanges for operating company IPOs with 90% total win rate during 2022 and 100% win rate in the fourth quarter of 2022 in the U.S. and the Nordics? That, that is correct, yeah. So we are really, really proud of the fact that companies that chose to go public in the year, we had 92% win rate among all operating company IPOs for the year, and we did have 100% win rate in the quarter. So um, it's really, you know, we're really proud of everything we do to support companies. As private companies, we provide them governance solutions, you know, the ability to start to understand the investor land, uh, the investor base. And then we also then, as they go public, provide a huge level of support to them, both marketing and IR and ESG capabilities that allow them to succeed as public companies. And I think that's really helping bolster our win rate.